All right. Hello. Welcome. Uh, this is the second time I'm trying to record a casual conversation because uh, I missed a very crucial part of the video that I said that I would cover in the last one. Uh, this is a reminder to future Nicholas. Hey, uh, please put together your outline for these well before the day of recording these you might forget something important that you've called out ahead of time you probably wouldn't have remembered this if you didn't already download all of the fucking images <laughs> for this video ahead of schedule you dummy either way though uh getting straight into things let me welcome you all for being here thank you especially on everyone who has supported the previous video the halo series personified uh it's been doing great i will admit a little bit of something from behind the scenes uh you'll regularly see some goof ass who will post great ad or best ad i've ever watched or some other stupid bullshit on uh one of the last two videos because of the last two videos i've essentially been paying for youtube's promotion system which means that my videos will sometimes appear as ads to people and depending on the thumbnail or how it looks or anything else like that some people will come in and watch the video and some absolute like comedians absolutely need to call out like this was an advertisement i watched and i enjoyed it uh it's not it's not really an advertisement yes it was advertised to you but it's not an advertisement i think any advert that runs for 30 minutes would should be on like the home shopping network so hi if you're watching from an ad that you've seen that video on and you decided to subscribe or like and now my videos are being recommended to you hi please stop commenting that you saw it as an ad it kind of confuses other people of like wait what is this an advertisement for and I've gotten a number of questions on that. So, hey, none of my videos are advertisements for anything. They are compute. They are completely and purely my views or opinions on whatever I just want to talk about. Speaking of which, the next video we're going to be covering is specifically called Console UIs Have Gotten Worse. Uh, Editor Dick, please put up the lovely thumbnail work done by dragon eternal 55 on twitter uh i absolutely love this especially when compared to the last thumbnail done by kami the dork i love both of these pieces but i mostly love the idea on how <laughs> different both of them are going to be next to each other <laughs> on my channel i love how these are gonna look they are going to just be completely like oh this is very lighthearted and cute and fun looking to holy shit what's going on in this video Dude, I, I love both of these thank you immensely to both of the artists i can't thank both of you enough for uh, the work you've done either way the next video is that uh i won't reveal what the video is really going into detail about mainly because i want you to actually go in and watch it uh again it's all going to be highly opinionated and just kind of a casual look at a lot of my things. That's why the series, if you guys don't look after the vertical line break or the vertical hyphen or whatever the fucking line, this line, put up this line on screen, Nicholas. Whatever this line is fucking called, that's why all of my videos have been titled deliberate draftings because I don't actually know what I'm talking about and most of it's not as refined as like something i would do professionally which i have worked professionally before that question pops up and i'm starting to get on my straw man soapbox okay keep moving keep moving keep moving if you would like to find more of my work i have all of these social media sites please follow me on them links will be in the pinned comment and in probably not the description because nobody fucking reads the description but links will definitely be in the pinned comment please a follow or a shout out or an ad or anything else like that i am more than happy to talk to you if you would like to talk and i appreciate any support you may or may not give me uh, most of my free time though will be focused on my twitch channel i stream three days a week 
Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays. 4 p.m. Mountain Time for Tuesday and Thursday. 2 p.m. Mountain Time for Saturday. Please convert that to whatever time zone that you're in. Uh, if you aren't able to catch any of those streams, I do have a separate a separate YouTube channel where I upload all of my Twitch VODs. And I have also been editing a lot of the clips that people will do during a stream and uploading those as well to YouTube, as well as Twitter and other places as well. If you can come by, say hi, say you liked or hated one of my videos, think I'm not funny, call me a bitch, I don't give a fuck. Come by, say whatever, I'd appreciate it. Okay. Before we get into the second half, because uh, the second half is really the questions that I've gotten from the last one of these videos. Uh, again, a reminder, if you would like to ask me anything and not have it be via Twitter or Twitch or anything else like that, and you care about like something related to any videos on this channel, please leave a comment here and ask me whatever you would like. I like to answer these questions in a little bit more detail here in these videos and i'll get to those in a second but the first part i really do need to hit is i promised that i would actually cover my actual thoughts on the halo franchise start to finish all of the games that i know of in this video so let's get to it hi if you're using sponsor block or some other bullshit and somebody selected this as the highlight hey guess what they did their jobs right thank you anyway Halo 1, Combat Evolved. Very good. Absolutely love it. Completely redefined FPSs on consoles for years to come. Essentially set the standard on how a lot of us think about FPSs. Going back to it now though, as like a time capsule, it is weirdly paced, a little jank. Please, please argue with me in the comments on how Halo Combat Evolved ain't a little jank. Sure, you're gonna be completely right on that aspect, aren't you, dog? It's a little jank. The story is fine. My biggest problem is really kind of the George Lucas-esque. You're playing up to a specific point in the story and then just kind of playing everything backwards as you leave Halo. For what it was doing at the time, 2001, I have enough self-respect for the series and the game to point it out like, no, nobody else was really doing anything else like that and it deserves to be respected. However, going back now, and we've seen better things, not only from this franchise, but other games, I'm very lukewarm on it. Also because I didn't really grow up with Halo 1. I got an Xbox relatively late into his lifespan, and I got Halo 2 before I ever got Halo 1. And even then I knew I liked Halo 2 better than Halo 1. But uh, if you need to have like a number, uh, we are going off of an actual rating, not IGN's fucking 7 out of 10 means it's mid. No, we're going off an actual rating where 5 out of 10 is average. And Halo Combat Evolved gets a strong 7. Great game, still something good to play. Multiplayer is still legendary for a fucking reason. Probably don't ever want to play the campaign too often unless I'm doing it with a friend. But even then, I would still have fun. Uh, Halo 2. This is the one I grew up with. This is the one I remember for a birthday back around this time. So it came out in 2004. I wanna say 2005 or six, I had a birthday where I got an Xbox, Halo 2, and then money to go down to the local video game store to, what? not local video game store, but local video rental place specifically. I think we had a family video and we rented another xbox extra controllers and another copy of halo 2 and for my birthday it was just like a LAN party because my parents grabbed another tv we put them both together in the basement we got a fucking like LAN switch like a little like just offline off internet like router or switch to just hook up both of the consoles and we had eight player split screen Halo 2 for like the whole night and it was one of the funnest most well-remembered birthday parties I've ever had and I love the hell out of it it was so good I miss those days uh Halo 2 though as a game because I was covering them from the single player aspect uh again massive problems 
pacing issues, story issues, trying to split things down the middle between Chief and the Arbiter. I get what they're going for, and I like the idea and how it kind of set up, uh, how it kind of sets up things for later in the series down the line. But as its own story, it muddies up things because it's, if I'm being honest, to me, Halo 2 is the Arbiter story, but Master Chief is also there still causing shit. So you don't really learn anything new about Chief. Yeah, there's new characters introduced on the human side, but like you really don't need to care that much about them either. It's really all context to build up for the Arbiter story. And while I do like the Arbiter story, I feel like we spend a little too much time with Chief. But if you didn't do more time with Chief, people would have a fucking fit, like an actual conniption. They would have hated the game. I still think it's a good game. I still think it's a fun time. I probably wouldn't go through like a full playthrough of it again at any time because a lot of it is set piece and something that you really like need to experience for the first time. After you know all of the big set pieces of what's going on, you kind of like rush past it because again, the pacing is kind of whatever. These set pieces are cool, but they also kind of expect you to sit there and wonder. You can't really just like play through them. Based on like our same rating scale, I want to give it another, I feel like seven's a little too low. I'll give it an eight. I'll give it an eight because I want to grade off of like a real system, but I'm also kind of basing it off a of curve. And we're basing it off of curve because of our <laughs> following game, uh, Halo fucking three. Dude, Halo three. I remember getting a fucking Xbox 360 with the Halo 3 bundled with it. I don't know why I'm saying this so fucking weird, but like, hey, I got a Halo 3 bundle when it came out for my birthday. Uh, Halo 3 came out like pretty close around my birthday, same month at least. And I absolutely begged my parents for that because I got it as soon as it came out. And I remember booting up the 360 thinking it was the coolest fucking video game console ever played through Halo 3, thought it was amazing, still love playing the campaign, even though you still got to deal with like all of the dumb Cortana getting in your fucking face and like smacking you like a bitch to say, pay attention to the story, Sean. No, shut up. I just want to play the game. Stop slowing things down. If there's ever like a mod in like the Master Chief collection that edits out all of Cortana's stupid ass interruptions, I think game would be like game of the year. Like, I, I think you would have to reevaluate Halo 3 as just like game of the year of current year every year. Because God, I can't fucking stand Cortana constantly interrupting. It's such a whatever part of the story to add. And because they don't want to put it only in the cutscenes, it affects me as a player. And I have to sit there and wait and watch as Chief has like a fucking mental breakdown over his hollow girlfriend. I, it's, whatever. I do appreciate the improvements that they've done to Arbiter's character, where now, hey, Halo 2 was all you, dog. Now Halo 3 gets to be for me, Master Chief. And thus I feel like, hey, everything that happened in Halo 2 needed to happen just so that we had the development and attachment to Arbiter and understand what he's doing. Halo 3 can actually be more of a its own thing. To be honest, I kind of view Halo 2 and 3 as sort of this like Sonic 3 and Knuckles situation because I don't know if you guys remember the ending of Halo 2, but the ending of Halo 2 is fucking rushed, cut down, kind of whatever, dog. And Halo 3 really feels more of the, no, this is kind of more of what we really wanted to do and the proper quote unquote should have been send off for the Master Chief. Great game. Still love it, love the multiplayer, love the single player. I'll play it anytime anybody wants to ask me. Still regularly play it with my girlfriend. Nine and a half out of 10. I don't think it's perfect because of the Cortana bits I specifically mentioned, but you can have a lot of fun with it. Uh, next up is Halo Wars. Not gonna be, uh, I'm gonna be real, I'm gonna be real. I never really played much of Halo Wars. I've seen friends play it, I've seen friends stream it. I've touched it once on 360 and i'm not crazy about it either 
it's kind of a whatever thing. I do want to shout out the developers for actually making a real-time strategy game work on console. I think nobody should ever like downplay that, but as far as like what Halo Wars does and really kind of adds to the overall universe, I think is very important. It adds a bunch of the vehicles, weaponry, talks more about the other Spartans, really kind of sells the idea that, hey, other Spartans are pretty good, but Master Chief is actually kind of built different. He's actually kind of just different, dog. And I appreciate that for what it does because it makes so much more of this actually come across very cool. Ultimately though, I don't think I'd ever recommend anybody to like really play it, mainly because I'm thinking of like that one mission where the fucking difficulty spike kind of just kicks in and is ready to twist your nuts or uh, like sack tap you real hard. I, I'm not crazy about it. Game is still important though. Game is still overall good, not too bad. I'd probably give it mm, six and a half. Six and a half out of 10, I wanna give it. It's not too bad. Uh, Let's see. After that, ODST. Do like ODST. I've genuinely changed my opinion of it over the years. I know when I was younger, I kinda thought ODST was a little bit overrated, a little bit pretentious, a little bit up its own ass. Uh, the storytelling aspect of it, I'm not crazy about either. Essentially playing the, the rookie who's essentially just following the aftermath of all of his team, either getting their asses kicked or just having moved on without him. Um, I'm kind of mixed on that. I really don't like it because I feel like Halo could just afford to cut out more of the rookie and just you know, play each one of the segments order to order. But then again, I feel like it feels like one of those things where you designed a bunch of levels and set pieces and things that you want to do, but couldn't come up with a good way to connect it all. So you just kind of put this like layer over it of the rookie kind of discovering the aftermath of certain situations and things like that going on and using him to stitch it all together. And I want to specifically use the word stitch because it doesn't flow well for me. I do love the character developments of like Buck and everyone else. There was a reason why I used that joke in the main Halo Personified video, because I really do like Buck as a character. Ultimately though, it did introduce the return of like the Halo 2 SMG, but with like a massive suppressor, I kind of like it, along with the scope that it adds. It kind of makes that gun viable. I actually do use it in Halo 3 whenever I play online, because I like the idea of it same with like other enemy types that you really don't see anymore like the little f floating guys that would provide like shields I don't, I don't remember what they're called off the top of my head but like those guys are cool i like that it tried its own thing and i feel like this was like the real first time we ever got like a proper bungee spinoff to halo but i'm still a little bit mixed on it i feel better about it but i'm still definitely mixed on it I'm gonna give it the same rating as Halo 1, seven out of 10. Definitely should play it. The music is honestly what ups it a lot for me because I do love the music in that game. Oh, and Firefight is cool. Reach, I'm gonna be honest, dog. I think it's overrated. I don't really care that much for Reach. I still think Reach is good. It was, I like the idea of the other Spartans. I like that they all have their own personality, different builds, different strengths. It's very cool. I know it was also the last game that was really like pushing the fuck out of the 360. But I also remembered the like Vaseline smearing levels of just how like everything felt like it had a massive motion blur or too much bloom and shit like that. I hate the visual aspect of Reach. You can't really see that in Master Chief Collection, I don't think. At least not anymore because, you know, you're not constrained to the fucking xbox 360 anymore but like the way that the story kind of has to constantly jump around and it kind of goes from like a this is a team just trying to save people on reach to oh this is actually a full-on war to this being like our first contact with the covenant i feel like that aspect can add a lot and make this thing really fucking cool however I feel like they don't do much with it. Like, I like Kat and Jorge and all the rest of those characters. They're very instantly memorable, but 
I kind of hate the armor abilities. I made a little bit of fun about that in the main Halo Personified video. I hate the fucking armor abilities. Uh, multiplayer felt even more unbalanced. And I'll be honest, overall, Halo Reach to me is like Destiny 0.5. Like this is like the Destiny beta, both in terms of like levels that are way too fucking big, story that thinks it's way smarter than it actually is abilities that are unique to each character quote unquote but like you kind of get them all weird changes in gameplay mechanics it it's kind of it's kind of whatever i don't hate it i definitely don't hate it and i do remember that even when it came out my friends like fell in love with reach and i was mostly just kind of like eh, yeah it's okay i don't hate it it's it's fun, I just wanna play games with my friends, so I played a lot of Reach, and I remember m multiplayer just being a pain in the ass, cause, I mean, if you're playing multiplayer, why are you not using the jetpack? Why are you not using, I forget what else there is. Nobody really did armor lock, you were just a stupid ass, unless you had like your girlfriend or your best friend who actually stayed with you so that you could actually just armor lock each other. That would be funny, that was always fun. But, you know, coordinating is a bitch. And again, I'm mostly talking about uh, the mainline single player series. Uh, final thoughts on Reach. It's it's Destiny 0.5. It's okay. It's not that bad. I'm giving it a six. It's still pretty good. It's still fun. I can still have fun in it, but it's kind of whatever. Halo 4. Halo 4. I remember being in college, my first year of college, and I fucking got Halo 4 and me and a friend from college just kind of sat up late one night after classes and we booted it up and we started playing it and we were like, this shit sucks. Fighting enemies that don't react to half of your shots suck. Fighting enemies who regularly just teleport out of being shot sucks. Chief is constantly like nearly fucking crying over his e-girlfriend. None of the guns felt as good, mainly because the people you were shooting or the characters you're shooting weren't very reactive to your gunfire, which dog, what's going on? All of it was just, it was mediocre. And I remember we reached the end of it and we were seeing like the dumb first person cutscenes of like Chief fighting the main bad guy and like wondering why is it a dumbass quick time event to like win the game or who even is this new forerunner guy and we're gonna try and act like these guys are a massive threat to both humanity and the covenant but both sides knew nothing about it i feel like the covenant even if their leaders are going to like cover it up and act like we don't actually fucking know that much about the forerunners but we're using their technology and they are our gods i feel like they would start like investigating more and doing more about the forerunners if they were actually like a massive fucking threat because i mean they're killing the covenant members too right if i remember right and i'm only thinking about this off the top of my fucking head the forerunners don't like the covenant if i remember right they were also killing them too and if that's the fucking case i'm not saying that they need to go full-blown okay hey unsc uh truce can we kill the forerunners I'm not saying they need to do that much, but like, I feel like they should be more effective against the Forerunners, which is kind of ridiculous to me. And then also kind of like the addition of the new Forerunner weapons. I, I didn't like any of them. The original energy versus kinetic weapon, like balance between the Covenant weapons and the human weapons was perfect. Adding this like third group that doesn't really add or do anything either way for you know either group and now this is the guns you're going to be mostly getting it sucks it's not interesting they they all kind of suck I don't, I don't really care for it ultimately halo 4 i'm gonna be honest it's it's a slog to play through for me uh four and a half out of ten uh spartan assault played a little bit of this i still think it's a fucking foe game i've never played much more than like I want to say maybe like a level or two of it but like if it was a game that i had to like put on my phone or on like the switch or like just something to like do because 
hey i asked if you had any games in your phone and i'm just playing this and it's halo just like ooh, cool guys it's something to do but i don't know anything about the story i don't know anything of the story that actually like affects anything else in this like overall canon i'm kind of whatever about it but i'm gonna give it a pass because i don't think it's offensive and i don't think it hurts anybody five out of ten spartan strike uh really quick don't even play it five out of ten halo 5 guardians though i feel like was kind of the the next big thing that i thought i was going to care a lot about in college when it came out but i didn't i, I didn't care about it at all it came out right around the time i was graduating too and ultimately i thought it was boring i liked what it was trying to go for with saying like hey you should really be playing this with friends and there's like special custom loadouts and this story is going to like really cover a lot of extra things i feel like i covered most of what i'm talking about here in the actual personified video on why i don't give too much of a fuck about it it almost feels like now because of the games that come out after it that it's been kind of retconned almost like you don't hear anything else about like chiefs other friends you don't hear anything about jameson Locke. you don't hear anything else about like any of the other characters so to me, I view it as Microsoft writing it off as a failure, that the thing sucked, that it doesn't really matter that much. I don't know if the t fucking TV series talks about Locke or anybody else. I don't really care enough to watch the TV series, I'm sorry. But Halo 5, I do remember kind of playing through solo and being like, this is okay. I'm not particularly enjoying myself, but you know what? I don't hate it enough to be like vitriolic about it. So let me award Halo 5 with a very appropriate 5 out of 10. I don't hate it, but I also don't like enough like it enough to do anything about it. It's it's kind of just whatever. Halo Wars 2, gonna be real. I conflated this with footage in the video in uh, the Halo Personified. I, I, I haven't played it. I honestly haven't played it. I've heard good things about how Halo Wars 2 is much better than Halo Wars 1. It doesn't have that big, dumb, stupid uh, difficulty spike very early on. It adds a little bit more to the universe. It's overall kind of a decent game. I mean, I hope eight years later, if you come back and make an RTS on it, I hope it's better. I really don't know of anything about it. I'm going to kind of reserve my judgment on it. There's kind of a reason why I kind of brushed over it. Uh, I did talk about the books in the main video. Uh, the books, all of the books, are, <laughs> I only read the first three. The first three books are okay. They're not great. There's not anything to be like, oh man, this is like a literary work of genius. It, in my past of working as a professional editor, I'm going to be real with you. The Halo books feel like something that you hired a ghostwriter for but like a notable ghostwriter for. And you're just kind of like, quote unquote, telling a story in the uni Halo universe. And it's not strong, not bad. It's very just whatever. I know the books get stupidly crazy later on, the more and more like the mainline Halo series starts introducing other characters. And I know s I've heard some of the characters from the books do show up in the games because the book series were popular at one point or another but ultimately i'm kind of i'm kind of whatever about it uh the books the first three books fives every book after that i hear they all go down so let's say four and a half kind of an average across all of them right and then finally that brings us to halo infinite uh halo infinite i was very excited for I've played the campaign through once. I have never gotten any friends to play the campaign through with me. Uh, I currently hate how split screen has been removed. It costs way too much to pay for a campaign that has like the multiplayer split across to be a live fucking service model. To me at that point, like the campaign should just cost $30. Just charge $30 for it because you've already taken out half of the game of what I would normally pay for to be the stupid ass live service microtransaction filled model. So move, take that and 
You're giving me half a game, so charge me for half a game. The campaign is fine. I did have a lot of fun with it. The grappling hook is literally the only saving grace in that entire fucking game. Good on them for making a good grappling hook system. I know that must have taken years to get right. Actual fucking years to get right. So kudos to whoever at 343 got that working, got it balanced, got it shaped up. Unfortunately, it felt like the only thing in that game that was properly show ready. Overall, I'm not, I kind of think the story is dumb. I think the banished is dumb as a fucking like enemy group. I mean, sure, fighting brutes is cool, but like they're kind of one note. There was a reason why I was kind of a transition to them as an enemy in Halo 3, but you still fought some actual elites. You still fought the jackals. You still fought the grunts because of how they played together. The brutes as like a late addition was to be kind of a change up. If I can use a baseball term, it was supposed to keep you on your toes because now the enemies aren't going to just play strategic. They're going to fucking rush you. But now we've had Halo 4 and Halo 5 to get used to them. Making them the main big evil enemy guys, eh, it's not, it's not very good. You kind of get used to it. It's kind of like just dealing with a hunter that doesn't have as much health or the same instant kill tenacity of if I touch you, you're probably dead on the higher difficulties. So it's kind of, it's kind of whatever. Ultimately though, Halo Infinite, eh, six out of 10, honestly, it's kind of a six. I really do wish that like 343 would wake the fuck up and say like, no, split screen is incredibly important to the people who play these games. Uh, actually making sure that people who are really buying the game are getting a full fucking game. Because I feel like the campaign is still also overpriced for what they're offering. It doesn't feel finished. It feels like the kind of thing that was stuck in development hell and nobody could really agree on like what everything needed to be at the end of the day. So it's it's, it's still pretty bad. And I'm, I'm very upset about that. Also, the uh, the multiplayer. Uh, no, no, I don't care about it at all. It's, it's very mid. It's very whatever. OK. Now that I covered all of the Halo series, uh, feel free to beat me up in the comments over it. it it's kind of whatever to be. <laughs> but let's move on to the last section. Uh, and that's actual questions from the last one of these videos. For those of you who don't know, uh, I do read all of the comments on all of my videos. I keep a pretty close tab on all of them. Uh, and specifically these casual conversations, uh, I look forward to seeing questions in the comments and I'm more than happy to talk about any of them that you might have for me. Let's kind of go through. I think one person asked three of these and then another person asked the fourth. So let's just run through them all together. Number one, are you going to do more Archie, Sonic and Knuckles read-alongs? Uh, the short answer is I would like to. The long answer is there took a lot of coordination to do the Knuckles, the Echidna recollection. Uh, that was over the course, I think, of like two or three months. And that was specifically a stream goal that I had for myself of averaging 35 viewers over a month. So uh, if you would like for me to read more Sonic or Knuckles, uh, please come by the Twitch stream. Just have me on in the background. I'm not asking like you got to be like actively engaged or some shit. Just have me on. I appreciate that a lot. And it's kind of also the deciding factor on if I get my friends together to read along more comic books. Right now we're doing X-Men just because I've missed out on a lot of X-Men and I do enjoy X-Men. But I would like to do more Archie Sonic or Knuckles, especially some of the other parts that I haven't seen. And then I would also like to read some of the newer stuff by IDW, I think is the current holder or current maker of the Sonic comics, because I've heard those are really good too. Next question. Uh, have you seen the live action Sonic movie yet? Or is Sonic movies yet? Excuse me. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, I saw the first one was, 
had like sonic flossing and like it had like a real dude in it and i was kind of like i don't fucking really know if i want to watch this but i heard i hear jim carrey in it is fucking great he's funny and he really kind of steals the show for the first movie but i've never had the desire to sit down and watch it by myself i don't watch a lot of movies or a lot of shows in general by myself it's usually with my girlfriend and my girlfriend kind of picks a lot of the tastes of what we end up actually watching most nights so if you convince ash slash uh, at wolver fox on twitter to watch the sonic <laughs> movies <laughs> hey guess what i probably will watch the movies uh i do know the sequel with idris elba was as knuckles was pretty fucking good as well again haven't watched it haven't had much of a desire to personally but like you know what i wouldn't turn it down i think it could be a fun event i hear it's good i think i heard that they're also making like a live action knuckles spinoff which you know what he's getting the hat i'm immediately all right hey i'm down but i'd have to find the time to watch it uh same deal for sonic 3 i think they i don't know if it was like a fan render or something but like that one's gonna have like shadow i think and i think i saw like a render for like amy and rouge the bat uh shout out zyzx underscore for filling my fucking timeline with nothing but like rouge the bat with like big ass titties and shit <laughs> my man is my man is down either way though i could be persuaded to watch him maybe even make like a very short like maybe like a part of one of these talking about like my thoughts about him but i just haven't watched him uh the final question from the first person uh do you see yourself doing more play alongs of new games or are you staying more with classic titles and short answer is a mix of both the long answer is there are some games that are coming out that i am just genuinely excited for uh for example dragon's dogma 2 is coming out very soon and I plan on doing a day one stream of that. I did a day one stream. I don't think I did a day one stream of Tekken 8, but like I was also incredibly excited for that. So I streamed it as soon as I possibly could. And I had a lot of fun with that. If there's a game that's brand new and I'm really excited for, I'll stream it. However, I feel like there are, Jesus Christ. There are a lot of games that have come out on previous generation consoles that I didn't get to properly appreciate or my feelings have changed over the years that I want to come back and revisit. Uh, as for specific eras, let's say sp specifically the console generations of like the PS1, the Nintendo 64 era, all the way up through to the 360 and PS3. That's kind of like my sweet spot of games that I like to stream. And I do consider the 360 and PS3 retro it's two console generations old now get over it <laughs> ultimately though i think that's kind of where i'm at on those uh again if you would like to see my opinion or see me play through those or a lot of those games i'm reacting to for the first time please do come by my twitch channel again linked in pin in the pin comment jesus christ i'm I'm running out of steam. Let's hurry up. Uh, from the second person who left a question, what's the writing process like for your videos? You will often refer to your co-writers in the credits and comments, but because you've been the channel's singular voice, when something gets lost, what sometimes gets lost, excuse me, is how everyone else is involved in the making of. Okay, I can give a very quick breakdown of this because I tend to ramble a lot, as can be told by like the recording timer right here hitting 45 minutes uh very quickly all of the video topics for the most part are me sometimes talking to a friend or somebody else will like influence a topic or something that happened recently might change the order of when i tackle a topic but for the most part all of the topics are solely me i come up with something that i say i want to talk about and then i start open a google doc uh from there we then have a back and forth cat and mouse over anywhere from two months to six months of me and Stein talking about, hey, Stein, we need to write the script. Hey, Stein, we need to write the script. And I kind of bug the hell out of him till he just goes, you didn't tell me to do this. And then I say, no, I did. I gave you the link multiple times. That's not to dog on Stein, by the way. 
Uh, I love that he is willing to help out and do whatever he can to help me out. And he has been an integral part of the writing process. He is my main co-writer for a reason. Otherwise though, after the topic comes up, I usually do like a very rough draft. I'll write a like an outline, kind of where I want to talk about things. It's usually top of mind, just kind of flowing through things. After that, it is then a process about putting down general notes, thoughts. If I really feel something like I've got like a real vision or a voice about something, I'll actually start writing out the written lines for things. And then Stein will also come in and add to sections as well. Uh, a great example of this is how the Nerf video came out. The Nerf video was genuinely kind of like a 60-40 split of writing between me and Stein on like what's going on, here's jokes to make, here's what we want to talk about, here's kind of our reactions to things. And it also happens to be <laughs> one of the less viewed videos on this channel, which I'm sad to constantly see. Other videos are more of like a 90-10 split. Like for example, the, uh, the Guardians Crusade video is like a 90 10 split that's mostly just me and stein coming back in and adding things and revising parts that are just completely shit or hey you're missing a joke here or hey add this talk about this this kind of doesn't pace well he's literally more of my own editing because i am if you haven't ever tried yourself uh editing yourself as a writer is very hard to be good at so having somebody else to edit for you or ask you, what are you going for? What's your process? What are you looking to do here? Is incredibly helpful. And that's a lot of what Stein does. Uh, same for Ash or Wolverfox. She will come in and poke holes and question, what am I actually going for? What is this joke? What are you trying to do here? And I need that a lot because sometimes I'll forget. And then if we talk about it and we agree like, oh no, this is actually good. Usually those two are the main ones coming up with jokes or giving me links to things that would actually be funny. Because if you've ever watched my Twitch streams, I am notoriously not fucking funny. People do not pick up when I'm making a joke. <laughs> so having them with me allows me to be funnier because I play off of other people better. I'm not a solo jokester. I'm not good at it. But Ash mostly will add like other references or things that I might miss, especially jokes or things that I don't get that she'll beg me to be like, please Cap, you gotta put this in the video. And adding those in to me as kind of a, I don't get what the fuck this is, is funny to me as well. So we'll go with that too. Uh, those two are my main co-writers though. There have been times where I've had Bree come in and like record a line or two Stein will record a line or two and that'll be written into the script i haven't gotten ash to do anything yet but i do want to get other people like bluto or like even some of my other more popular twitch streamer friends to kind of like do a line i almost had lythero do a line for the tube slider video kind of like as the f-zero joke because he's a massive f-zero fan but i didn't actually go through with it just because like i didn't want to bother him i do know who he is i do have a way to contact him but like i didn't feel like it was like really worth like oh man can i get you to record a line so i could like boost my numbers i i would have felt bad about that uh back on the writing process though again most of the writing is like anywhere from like a 90 10 split to like a 60 40 split on most streams not most streams most scripts jesus christ and Usually that process is Stein and I just sitting in a call, just talking about like, hey, what are you going for? What's happening? What is your point of this? Here's a joke you should add, things like that. And then after that, I will do the recording process. I will record all my lines, no matter what. First a read through, then an actual proper recording. And then after the recording, I will get to the proper editing phase and when I start putting things together with visuals, that's usually kind of like the main time when my brain kicks in and says, oh no, this part is fucking stupid, or this isn't funny, or this whole section just needs to get cut out because it's belaboring the point, or it's, it's tangenting too hard. And I've had full jokes get cut out, 
I've had uh, full like side tangents get cut out. A video that I'll initially record that will start off at around like, I'll say like almost like an hour's worth of like actual audio, even after I cut out all of the dead air and silence, will get cut down to what you see on the YouTube channel. 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, sometimes in some cases, because it's just not anything to do. There's not anything good to actually like have from it. And it sucks, but it also needs to happen, right? Like I want my videos to be very svelte, very tight, very quickly paced. Whereas these, I can just kind of ramble for like a little while. And because I'm going for that, dichotomy it leads to a lot of things being left on the cutting room floor i've thought about making my scripts public and i think i could but i don't think there's that many people who would actually care to see them so you know if you would like to see with like all of the strike throughs of like parts that got cut out of the script or like things that were originally in a script and seeing who wrote what because a lot of the times Ash's additions will be like in a different color. Stein will sometimes just completely write things, but you can kind of tell his writing style from mine and how I talk. I think it could be cool. I would be happy sharing that. Uh, other than that though, by the time I hit the editing phase and we start putting things together, uh, I want to get in the habit of having more beta viewers. Uh, I want to give another shout out because I don't think I have it in this take of this recording. Uh, shout outs to Frogcast and the others in her server, specifically Keen and Runa, for being my beta viewers on the Halo Personified series. I specifically tapped Cass because she is a massive Halo fan and knows a lot about the lore and other things like that. And because this wasn't going to be like a serious lore video, I wanted to make sure that the jokes I was getting were actually kind of right uh she even called me out on one of the jokes that were specifically <laughs> one of the parts that were specifically written by stein now because i forgot about like the the fucking like oh half the story of one of the games was in multiplayer and i think we attributed it to the wrong halo game i forget which one and i'm also not gonna open up my own video right now to double check but we got one of them wrong and cast caught that out and i had to edit in another no unacceptable in the middle of the video as hey no i got this wrong i'm aware somebody told me and i think that saved me at least like 12 angry halo fans of hey dumbass you got this wrong i got to feel superior at the same time i kind of didn't want to edit it in because <laughs> hey the algorithm requires a judgment and even if you're bad at me in the comments that means i get more views dog either way though that's kind of where I'm at with those. Uh, that's the process right now. Uh, this new video, the next video for console UIs is going to be a little bit looser because I want it to be more based around like immediate vibes or how it feels to control or go around some of these UIs, even like modern day compared comparatively to like the older UIs nowadays. So let's see how that one goes. All right, if you reach this far to the end of this video, <laughs> Looking at my recording timer, I've been recording for about an hour, but it's actually the second take, so it's really been more about two hours sitting in this chair, talking at a mic on just, like, shitting out my half-assed ideas. I appreciate you. Hey, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope that you will reach out to me on any of my socials, come by the streams, any of that thing. Leave a comment, I hope so. Would be highly appreciative. Uh, let me just thank you for listening. Thank you for if you've done any type of interaction with me. Hopefully it was positive. Hope you enjoyed yourself. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, we'll put out another one of these. Not in April, because April will be the console UI video, which I am actively working on. The script is pretty much done. I need to get Stein to look over that. But I'm almost ready to pretty much start editing and putting that together before I go on my trip in April. And it should be out, if not before we leave. I would like to get it done before we leave. It'll be done after we get back. And then you'll hear me back in one of these formats the following month in May. So I'm looking forward to answering more questions that you guys might have. Just having this as this title, casual conversation with you guys. So looking forward to all that. 
again not looking forward to editing all of this because i do edit these oh man uh either way though thank you all for watching and listening on to what is essentially a podcast i'm starting to put these in the podcast as well and i hope to hear back from you guys soon thank you all bye